Hey friends, Tina here with our Blessed and Beautiful Life. Welcome back to my channel. How's everybody doing out there? Um, I'm doing a recording on my phone. I'm not using my, my good camera, so hopefully you guys can see me and hear me. Um, looks like YouTube kind of changed up the video options for like just doing like a selfie video. Um, if it's just something you're doing on a, the fly, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, so anyway, um, how's everybody doing? We've got so much going on in the world, right? Got the virus and riots and craziness and have, I have just been having to tune out from social media. How about you guys? Anybody else? I've been tuning out. Um, I might pop on like once or twice a day, check to see if I have notifications, maybe post a picture, but, um, mindlessly scrolling, I just realize I have to like stop doing that. It's just been crazy. It, I think it subconsciously gets to you. Even if you don't want to acknowledge that it does, I think it does. So protecting yourself, I think is very important emotionally and everything else. So, um, that leads into the purpose of this video, actually. <laughs> That's a good segue. So this video today, you guys, is kind of different from, uh, what I normally talk about, you know, my channel is just kind of like a little bit of everything, our, our life with our little homestead, our homeschooling journey so far, uh, just kind of life in general, like how we roll, how things go. Um, and we've even shared some very personal, intimate experiences with you guys, like um, our journey to try and adopt a little boy, which did not work out. Um, so this video, I feel it on my heart to talk about this. Um, for one of two reasons. One, because I think that if I'm feeling like this, there's got to be someone else out there that's feeling like this too. So this video is for you, uh, if you're in the same situation. And also because recently I, I feel that I've been kind of attacked, um, for no reason, just living my best life. And then I'm just kind of out of the, the corner, just attacked for no reason. So, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about that. I'm not going to go into the details because I'm not going to give energy to that um, or those people. And um, so this video today, I wanted to talk to you guys about haters and negative people and just kind of detoxing poisonous people out of your life. Um, not that I am all knowing or all authority or anything spectacular because I'm not, I'm just an average person coming from my own uh, experiences. But if you are in a situation in your life where you have toxic people and by toxic, toxic people, I mean people that are constantly making you feel bad about yourself, constantly bringing you down, constantly throwing your past in your face. Um, just, I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. We all have those people in our lives where we can't wait to be around them because they just lift up our our hearts and our minds and we just flourish when we're around them. But then we also have those people where we're just kind of like when you see their name on the phone, you're like, not again. <laughs> they just kind of suck the life out of you. Um, so that's why I wanted to talk to you guys about this today. I want to give you permission if you're in that situation and you've been on the fence and you don't really know what to do about it. Um, should I cut this person off? Should I not? Am I okay to do that? What does God say about that? Um, that is number one most important is to know what God says about that. And he says a lot and we're going to talk about it today. So um, I'm giving you permission. If you've got toxins in your life, um, get rid of them period. You don't need anybody's permission. You don't need to justify why. Um, you have to be able to put boundaries up around your heart, around your spirit, around your family, around your home to keep yourself safe, um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of the above. And I'm here to tell you guys that if you don't create boundaries, nobody else is going to do it for you. It's no different than raising our children, right? We have boundaries around our children so that when they cross those boundaries or they go too far or they make those mistakes, we can have accountability. And then there are consequences for breaking those boundaries. If you don't set the boundaries up, set the stage to begin with, with what the expectations are, 
there's nothing to fall back on. The kids are going to, you know, what do your kids always say? Well, you didn't tell me I couldn't do that. You know, I mean, I've got an almost eight year old now and I have an 18 year old daughter. So I've heard that before. It's like, you have to be very clear and very concise on what you may and may not do. That way um, you have something to fall back on later. So um, I have, for lack of a better term, I have cut certain people out of my life. Um, there's a few of them, uh, probably two or three people. And actually, they are all blood relatives. Um, so we're a military family. Joe and I were both in the Army together, got out of the Army, both went in the Coast Guard. I've since gotten out. He's still active duty, retiring in two years. Whoa, whoa. Um, but, you know, we haven't been really close with our blood family. And it's not because there was anything wrong with our family, um, most of them anyway, right? We just our family became our military friends and family and neighbors and things like that. Every three or four years for our whole uh, almost 21 year marriage, we have moved. So it was adapt and overcome. It was creating new relationships. So most of our friends, uh, closest friends were not family. Uh, so I have made the decision to cut out certain people from my life. And these people have hurt me deeply. Some of them on multiple occasions. Um, I, I've definitely matured, I think, as I've gotten older and just realized that it's okay to do that. It's okay to cut that out of your life. Um, and I say that with the understanding and I want to make it so clear that if any one of those people truly changed, truly repented to God and changed their character and changed how they are and wanted to rekindle a relationship with me and have a healthy, safe environment um, in a relationship with healthy boundaries, I would absolutely entertain that. Um, I'm not someone that holds a grudge that, you know, oh, oh I made up my mind. I'm never going to talk to you again. That's just the way it is. No, no. I'm certainly open to um, forgiveness and rekindling and learning and growing and healing. Um, I'm not perfect. I've hurt people. I've made mistakes. So, um, you know, it's, it's not funny. I'm saying it's funny, but it's not funny. I have been, uh, nicknamed, well, I'll just let, I'll just say it. I've been nicknamed a stuck up bitch because, you know, I, I think I'm perfect. I think I'm better than any, everybody. And anyone that doesn't fit into my perfect perfection, um, I just cut them out of my life. Like, Okay, sure. Um, if if having boundaries to protect myself emotionally is makes me stuck up, then so be it. <laughs> okay, that doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm totally fine with that because the most important people in my life are the ones that are in my life right now. So I'm not going to give any energy to the haters that want to call me names and want to make things up about me um, just because I won't, for lack of a better term, put up with their crap. Just not doing it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I find it really interesting that these people think I'm so terrible, have venomous things to say about me, yet here they are watching my YouTube channel, uh, you know, come to find out that's how they keep tabs. So of course I've blocked them out of my life. I've blocked them from my social media, um, to try to keep my things private, but my channel is not private. That would defeat the whole purpose of having a YouTube channel. So they can go on my channel and they can see whatever they want. They can see what we're up to, what's new in our life. Um, but I want to make sure that people understand that don't understand YouTube very well. Um, I am able to block users. So if I know who you are, I will block you. And you can um, go and create new accounts or create new names that I don't know to try and get around that. And I'll block those ones too. Um, I mean, if you really have that much time in your life to be doing that, that's kind of sad. But I, I wouldn't put it past these people. So um, I will block you. And I want to make sure you understand some of the hateful, venomous comments that you've been leaving on my videos. Um, only you're seeing those just 
FYI, because as soon as I see them, my phone notifies me when I get a comment on my video and I can immediately go in and look at it. And if it's hateful and just rude and disgusting, um, I, I just delete it and I hide it. And then that hides any future comments that you ever make on any of my future videos too. So on your end, as the YouTube consumer, it doesn't tell you that. It doesn't say our blessed and beautiful life blocked, blocked you. It doesn't say that for whatever reason, which I, I wish YouTube would change that. Like if I block someone, I want them to know I block them, but YouTube doesn't do that. So on your end, you're gonna post a nasty comment and it's gonna look like it posted, but only you're gonna see it because it's been hidden from my page for all of eternity and any future comments. So I just wanna put that out there. So when you're typing away, little keyboard warrior um, with your nastiness, it's really a big fat waste of your time because nobody sees it. So, but go ahead, stay on my page. Keep watching my videos. I love that you are so interested in my life that that's what you're filling your time with because guess what? Um, that helps me and my channel be more successful because I've got more watch hours and more views and that's how YouTube works uh, with the algorithm and all. So thank you. I, I do appreciate that. Um, I wanted to focus mainly today on... Uh, forgiveness and learning to release people from your life that are not good for your life. So there's, I think, as with a lot of things in the Bible, you know, there's a lot of scripture that is left up for uh, interpretation, left up for perception. There's a lot of theologists that um, go back and forth on certain scriptures, and that's because they're kind of unclear. Um, and they're able to be taken and pulled apart and say, well, no, I think it means this. And then someone says, well, no, I think it means this. But everything that I've read in the Bible about forgiveness and about, um, you know, cutting people out of your life is very clear to me. And so what I'm sharing right now is my perception on the scriptures that I have read and I feel where God has led me because I don't make a decision without going to the word first. I used to. And that's where a lot of my mistakes came from, but I don't anymore. I go straight to the Bible, straight to prayer and I ask God, what do you want me to do? Um, so these are my interpretations of what God says. Now, people like to throw that word forgiveness around. Okay. How many times have you guys heard, oh, you're not supposed to judge people. Oh, God says we're supposed to forgive. Yes, he does. He absolutely does. And he like who are we to think that we can't forgive someone, but God forgave us and literally sacrificed his son on a cross for our wretched sins? I, I would never think I'm above forgiveness. Um, I think that those people have a misunderstanding of what forgiveness really means. And if you look up forgiveness, it is releasing the resentment that you feel towards your offender Let me just say it one more time. Forgiveness is releasing the resentment that you feel towards. All right, you guys, I'm back. So I don't know what happened just there, but it cut me off. And I'm going to try to see if I can splice these together. Um, but what we were talking about was forgiveness and um, how forgiveness is releasing the resentment that you feel towards your offender. So forgiveness does not mean releasing resentment towards your offender, but letting them continue to walk on you. Releasing resentment from your offender, but letting them continue to treat you like the dog crap under their shoe. That is not forgiveness. That is not what God says in the Bible at all. So that thought just needs to go out the window. The thought that if you don't allow someone to walk all over you and allow them to do it over and over and over again, that means that you haven't forgiven them. That means that you're holding a grudge in your heart against them. No, that just means you're protecting yourself. That means you are putting boundaries up. That's smart. That doesn't mean that I haven't forgiven these people. I've forgiven every single person I've cut out of my life. I am not angry towards them. I harbor no ill feelings towards any one of them. I just don't. I don't think about them. I don't go and try to see what's going on in their life. I have literally released them. And 
I would encourage you to pray for those people. Pray for God to soften their heart. You know, look at the Pharaoh in Egypt. How many times does the Bible say God hardened his heart? The Pharaoh's heart was so hardened, even after all of the plagues, all of the everything that God put on Egypt, because the Pharaoh would not release the uh, Hebrews, right? So the Pharaoh was so stubborn and had such a hard heart that it took God striking his son and killing him before he finally woke up and realized. So pray for these people that you have cut out of your life and pray for God to soften their heart and for them to see the light and change their ways so that hopefully maybe one day you can rekindle and have a relationship with them. You guys pray for them. Um, so the Bible says to forgive. It doesn't say that you have to sit there and be a doormat for anybody. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that you have to be a doormat for anybody. In Matthew, Peter comes to Jesus and asks him, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is, uh, let's see, in case you guys want to look, it's, um, I think it's Matthew 18, Matthew 18, 21. Peter comes to Jesus and asks him, you know, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister, you know? Uh, how many times should I forgive their offense? Seven times? Like he actually points out a number, seven, seven times. And Jesus looks at him and says, but I tell you not seven times, but 70 times. So Jesus is telling you that it doesn't matter what they've done to you or how many times they've done it. He expects you to forgive them and to not harbor that anger or that hurt towards them. Um, You know, God tells us in the Bible that, for that which we judge others, that measure that we judge others, that's how we're going to be judged. I don't want to be judged like that by God. So forgive, release, cleanse your heart, cleanse your spirit, and forgive them. Um, but while the Bible is filled with forgiveness and God's very clear on forgiveness, he's also crystal clear on who we are and are not to associate with. And I have pulled out just a few verses. You guys, you can go through the Bible and it is just like littered with verses about this kind of stuff. Um, but like I said, when I don't know what to do, I go to the Bible and I search. And, you know, I'm searching too to see, search my heart and see where I'm at. You know, um, you can't be just tunnel vision, a one way thinking. You've got to really look and go, well, is this me? Um so I wanted to read you guys a couple verses about what God says about the people that we are and are not to hang out with. And hopefully this will give you a little bit of reassurance and a little bit of comfort that God is on your side. So when you've cut these people out of your life and you've forgiven them and you've begun to pray about them, rest and know that God has given you permission to release them. And he, he will bless you for that. He, he will bless you for that. So let's take a quick look. Some of these are shorter verses. Let's take a quick look about um, what Jesus says about the people we should and should not be hanging out with. Proverbs 4, 14 through 15. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. You guys, he's saying, stop, do not enter. No, go that way, not that way. He's telling you. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, that's that's harsh. You know, if you've cut off a, a neighbor or you've cut off a family member, well, to say that they're wicked. You guys, we don't fight a physical battle. We, It's not a fleshly battle. It is a battle of spiritual warfare that we are fighting every single day. And Satan uses our friends and our neighbors and our family members to whittle us away and break us down little by little. So yes, if those people are toxic in your life, making you feel like dog crap, reminding you of every mistake you ever made in your past, even if you've asked God for forgiveness, which by the way, that's the only one that really matters, okay? Jesus says when you have asked him for forgiveness, he takes your sin and it is thrown from the east to the west. It's gone. So who is someone else to keep throwing that mistake or that sin in your face, reminding you of your skeletons in your closet. How dare they? What gives them the right? 
To that I say, look in the mirror. You do you, worry about your own sins, and don't keep throwing my sins in my face because that's between me and God. If someone is doing that to you guys, that is not of God, that is of Satan, okay? God says, you ask for forgiveness, your sin is gone. It's as if it never happened. So, yes, they're wicked, they're evil. If that's what they're doing to you and making you feel this big every time you're around them, that's not someone you should have in your life. Let's look at, um, oh, this is a good one. Proverbs 20, 19. Proverbs is a really good book. It's a book on wisdom, um, good life book. So I would encourage you to read Proverbs. So 20, 19. Slandering reveals secrets. Don't associate with a babbler. So what is slander? Slander is false spoken statements damaging to a person's reputation. So you guys look at today's world and the slander that we see on Facebook and the internet and texting fights and all this crap. It's slander. If it's not true, it's slander. Um, God says, stay away from those kind of people. Misery loves company. They like to tear you down to make themselves feel better. It's sad, but that's all it is. It is literally to take the focus off of themselves and how they're feeling about themselves and put the focus on someone else. He says, stay away from them. Stay away from the babbler. <laughs> Proverbs again, Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. It says, do not make friends with a hot tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. So it's telling you to watch your circle, watch who you're hanging out with, because if you're not careful, you become what you hang out with. How many times do we hear that? Think of the top five people in your life. Who are they? You become like the, the top five people that you hang out with. So who do you hang out with the most? Make sure that it's people that are people that are that you want to be like, that are good people, uh, good Christians, because you become what you hang out with. Uh, let's see. I've got a few more here. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 5.11. But now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone, okay? You must not associate with anyone. And I'm going to finish the verse, but I just want you to hear that. If God didn't feel that we should cut people out of our lives or not have anything to do with certain types of people, he would not say things like this. I'm not making this up. It's in the Bible. I'm not making this up. Do not, sorry, you must not, he says, you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or a sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or slanderer or drunkard or a swindler. Do not even eat with such people. That's pretty harsh for a God that's like, oh, everybody needs to just forgive and sing songs and love everyone. No, God is a God of love, but God is a God of wrath and a God of judgment. What does he promise us this whole life we're living and leading up to is going to end with his judgment upon us. So he's clear about that. Now, what's a swindler? I know a couple of these. A swindler is to put forward plausible schemes or trickery to defraud others, okay? Liars, scam artists, fakes. Um, another translation has a reviler. Am I saying that right? I don't know, I'll have to look it up. Um, and that's to criticize an abusive or hostile way or to spread negative info. So gossiping, lying, just hatefulness for no reason. Who wants to be around that? Not me. 
So God's telling you, do not associate with people like these. He doesn't say, unless it's your mom, unless it's your sister, unless it's your brother, unless it's your great, great granddaddy. He doesn't say that. He's very clear about who you must not associate with. And that's to protect your heart and to protect your spirit. And you're to be the light as a Christian. You can't be the light and shine bright when you have someone constantly putting a damper on you, making you feel like a piece of crap. You can't shine bright when you have those people closing in on you that don't want to bring out the best, but want to bring out the freaking worst. After that verse, uh, verse 12, and I just want to touch on this really quick because I think it's really important. It says, what business is it of mine to judge those that are outside of the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. That's a lot. That is like majorness packed into a verse. People are like, we're not supposed to judge. God says, don't judge. Christians aren't supposed to judge. Don't judge. That is not what God says. God says, if we are believers, then we are absolutely to hold each other accountable. If it's something coming from an unbeliever, someone that's outside of that realm that has offended you, God says, I will take care of those people. But we are absolutely supposed to hold each other accountable if we are believers. If we don't, then who will? I mean, here, while we're on earth, right? Obviously, God's going to hold us all accountable one day. But we are absolutely supposed to hold each other accountable as Christians. So keep that in mind. Call it like you see it. You know, these people in your life, don't be afraid to speak up. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for yourself. It's your well-being on the line. It's the well-being of your family. It's the well-being possibly of your children. Stand up for yourself. Speak your mind. Call it like you see it. And when someone offends you and hurts you, or crosses you, or betrays you, call them on it. Bring it to the surface. Talk about it. If y'all can move past it, great. If not, and they want to continue to stomp on you, or stomp on your spouse, let me talk about that for a quick second. If you're a believer and you're married, God says a husband leaves his mother and his father and becomes one with his wife. You are no longer two people. You're one. And if you have someone in your life, and I'm saying this from personal experience, if you have someone in your life that cannot accept your spouse, then you really need to look at that situation. I have, I've heard a lot of people that are like, oh, my family doesn't accept my husband. And they're just, you know, he can't, he can't come to the Thanksgiving dinners, but I can. No, no, no. I've had someone do that to me that's like, oh, you can come visit us and you can stay here at the house, but um, Joe can't stay. He's got to stay somewhere else. No, then Tina's not going because Tina and Joe are one. You have to protect your circle. You have to protect your family. All right. Let's look really quick at 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Let's see here. 1533, do not be misled. This is a very simple, simple verse, very short. Write it in eyeliner on your mirror so you can read every morning. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. God said it. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Again, you are what you hang out with. Um, this is a, a big one. I have two more that I wanted to share with you guys. And again, these are um, just, just a few, you guys. 
you can really you can just literally google them and read for yourself what god says about toxic people and what you should do and what you should not do um this one is is big so this is galatians 5 um and i'm starting at 16 and i'm going to read through 22 verse 22 and I was only going to read, so this is about the fruits of the spirit. So God says in the Bible, how do we know someone's good or how do we know someone's evil? How do we know? I mean, he says, you can tell by the fruit of that tree. You can tell by the fruit that they put off. Is the fruit that they put off nasty? Is it rotten? Does it stink? Does it make you not feel so good about yourself? That's bad fruit. That's a bad person. If the fruit is good and sweet and uplifting and good for your soul and it nourishes you, makes you feel like a good human, you can't wait to eat it again and again and again, then that's a good person. God says, you know, good from evil by the fruit of that tree. So I thought this was interesting because he goes into the fruit of the spirit. So when I read this, I want you to think of those people in your life and think of the fruit of the spirit. What is the fruit of the spirit and what is not the fruit of the spirit? Okay. This makes it very simple. How do you know? How do you know? This is how you know right here. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh, they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Now let's skip down to 19. Okay. So there's a clear difference between the flesh and the spirit. The acts of the flesh, this is the bad fruit. The acts of the flesh are obvious. He says, obvious. You should be able to see this and spot it and don't doubt yourself when you do. Sexual immortality impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's your bad fruit, okay? Doesn't have to be something crazy like a murderer. Doesn't have to be someone that's committed a sexual sin against you. He says discord, strife, someone that brings drama into your life, jealousy, envy, all these things. But what I think is really neat is he goes on to talk about the fruit of the spirit the good fruit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is how you can tell if it's someone that you need to separate from your circle from your life or someone to keep in it and to hold close to your heart. That's like black and white night and day. He literally just laid it out there for you. The fruit of the spirit. These are the people you want around you. And if you bring this around me, I will love you always. But if you bring the top paragraph that I read that bad fruit anywhere near me, if I even smell it, I'm going to shut the door. I'm going to lock the deadbolt and I won't open it again. And I feel 100% confident in doing that because God tells me to. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's a big one. The last one, you guys, is Titus 3, 9 through 11. It says, warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. You may be sure that such people are warped 
and sinful. They are self-condemned. What more do you need? It's all right there. And that's why I felt confident saying, if you need someone to validate what you're feeling, if you need a friend to say, hey, whoa, I'm not telling you to go and have a relationship with that person if this, 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 and this is what they've done to you. I'm giving you the courage to cut them out, forgive them, pray for them, uh, maybe be open to rekindling the relationship if there's true repentance. Um, but don't think for one second that you have to be a doormat because he says you don't. Give him a chance. Give him two chances, he says right here. But then <laughs> after that, have nothing to do with them. So kind of a deep video kind of, you know, gets me going a little bit because like I said, this is kind of stems from like recent attacks for no reason. Um, sitting here living my life and I just have these haters that want to keep me, 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 me. So, um, since I know they are watching my YouTube channel, maybe they'll hear this. Maybe that, uh, the, some of this will sink in and maybe they'll go and read the Bible for themselves and see what God says about all this stuff. But um, I'm not better than anybody. I'm not perfect. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've never professed to be perfect. Um, but I do know that the mistakes and the sins I've made in my lifetime have been forgiven. And I don't need to be forgiven by anybody but God. Nor will I ask for forgiveness from anybody. Because those kind of people... Um, it's never going to make a difference. It's not fun to be friends with somebody that you feel like in the background, they have like this little record book and they're keeping a tally of all the things you've ever done wrong or the mistakes you've made just so when the time comes, they can just blah, throw it all up on you. So that is all friends, kind of a long video, but I hope you stuck in there with me. Um, and uh, sorry, it was a little dark, but I just wanted to say, you know, I actually even thought about getting rid of my YouTube channel because it's like when I cut people out, I want them out. I don't want them in my life at all. And um, I thought about just getting rid of my YouTube channel because, you know, I'm finally to the point where I've got like, I don't know, I'm super stoked, almost 1,500 subscribers. <laughs> like, that's great. There's people with like millions, right? I just think that's kind of cool because I've, I, I have a community. And even some of you, I know your names, you comment all the time, and I just love you guys. And um, I thought I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't have to delete my channel. And I've had this channel for like two and a half years and just hundreds of hours and, and work has gone into my videos and editing and um, it's just come so far. And I'm like, no, I am not going to let them put me in that mental state where I shut down and not do what I love because I love my YouTube channel. It's a place for me to be creative. It's a place for me to express my opinions. It's a place for me to share our journey. Um, and I'm not going to do that. I have every right to be here. So I'm not going anywhere. But anyways, leave me a comment, you guys. Let me know what you think about this video. Let, let me know what you think about your thoughts um, about what God says about forgiveness um, and also those that we are not supposed to associate with. So remember, be kind because if you're a little meanie weenie, I'm just going to delete it and block you. All right, guys. Love you. Take care. We'll see you next time.